Hello, my name is Elisa Deli. I'm an intuitive astrologer and tarot reader, and today I'm here to talk to you about the first half of June, the new moon in Gemini, and we're gonna get into all of the astrological energy, and we're gonna be channeling messages directly from source to see what it is that we need to know about this first bit of June. So, a quick recap of the astrological weather that's led up to us being here. Um, it's We're in what I'm calling this first half of June is an alchemical portal for shadow work, okay? I really feel that there is a strong combination of astrological aspects that support us in diving deep into the shadow, but at the same time giving us a buoyancy and a lightheartedness and a fun that can help contrast and balance out the like, heaviness of doing this that deep inner work. And this really began on June 25th, on, excuse me, May 25th, when Jupiter entered Gemini. This was a powerful shift in the energy. Um, those last couple weeks of Jupiter in Gemini, uh, Jupiter in Taurus and in Taurus season were really heavy, really dense. There was a lot going on. Um, yeah, it was just like a lot. <laughs> it was intense. And so as soon as Jupiter entered Gemini, it was just this breath of fresh air, positive new fresh energy that was there to support us and bring us into more light buoyancy. And then on May 29th, we had Mars conjunct Chiron at 22 degrees of Aries. And what this did was it exposed the wound. It exposed the pain. It, it brought into our conscious awareness the wound and therefore the shadow that's associated with that wound. So that was happening for all of us on a very personal level, but also on a collective level. This was around the times when there was the bombings happening in Rafa and the big global outcry on social media of a lot of people, you know, speaking up and talking about what is happening in Gaza. And so this was a very big deal and a very important moment for um, addressing the wound of colonial patriarchal uh, oppression that has been rampant for the past couple thousand years. And, um, you know, on that day, the wound was exposed. Everyone could see how clearly, how effed up the whole situation is, right? And um, there was nothing to hide behind. It, the raw wound was right there in our faces with those... Um, people being burned alive in tents, right? So this, what, what was happening on that global stage and the war was also playing out for us internally in our psyches and in our personal lives where something was exposed, um, something, was, some, something was triggered and activated so that there was no way we could not see it and not engage with it anymore. It became obvious to us. And just yesterday on June 2nd, we had a beautiful trine between Pluto and Jupiter at the early degrees of um, Aquarius and Gemini respectively. And it was just such a harmonious aspect that brought a buoyancy, a lightness, and a assistance to the process of bringing into the conscious mind all of those unconscious shadow aspects, right? Because I always say with shadow work, half the battle is knowing what the shadow is because the shadow by definition is something that stays in our subconscious mind it's something that we are not aware of it's something we can't see or understand or even perceive it's something that upon perception usually makes us very uncomfortable very feelings of shame could be brought up lots of negative feelings can be brought up once that shadow aspect is actually uh, witnessed right so we witnessed it at the end of May. It was brought to our attention, brought into our conscious awareness. Yesterday, we had the beautiful aspect to help us understand and integrate the subconscious nature of that issue into our, the frontal part of our mind, into our conscious essence. Tomorrow, on June 4th, we have a beautiful Venus Kazemi. Venus is entering the heart of the sun at 14 degrees of Gemini. This is a, brings a lightness and a buoyancy and a fun and a lightheartedness to everything, right? It's reminding us that we can be both and, that we can be in on a healing journey and on a spiritual path, but we can still be whole and complete. That we can be in the process of, 
we can be in the process and on the journey, but that doesn't mean we're not whole. And that we can be in the process of grieving, doing shadow work, um, uh, doing, you know, uh, activism and, and speaking out against injustices in our personal lives and in the world, but we can still allow ourselves to have fun and to um, appreciate what we do have, right? It doesn't have to be this black and white, very harsh kind of way of being. Gemini reminds us that we can be both and, and we can have fun in the process, right? And Gemini is the storyteller also. So it's also a reminder that we get to choose what kind of story and narrative we're telling ourselves about our lives, about the world, about everything that we're engaging with. We get to choose what kind of story, what kind of narrative we want to give to our lives, right? And so this is all leading up to the new moon on June 6th where we have a whole bunch of planets in, in, um, in Gemini. We have like five, or five planets in Gemini. Sedna just, just recently moved into Gemini also. Sedna is a dwarf planet. She is way out there. And <laughs> it's um, a new planet that's bringing, that astrologers are talking a lot about and that I really love as an archetype for the new earth. Um, she's an Inuit goddess that... The, the mythology is that her father was going to sell her to be married, but she didn't want to. They were on a boat and a storm came in and in order to save himself, his, her father threw her off the boat. Otherwise the boat would capsize and they both would die. And Sedna's holding on to the side of the boat and he goes and he cuts, he cuts her fingers off so that she can't hold on to the boat anymore and she lets go. And the myth is, is that her fingers that fell into the sea, they all became the beautiful sea creatures like whales and dolphins and turtles and other things like that. So, so this, this, this um, archetype we have of the wounded feminine who was abused and mistreated by the patriarchy, by the father, right? This is something that is also being brought into that Gemini realm of our lives. So this new moon, I really feel, is a powerful moment of reckoning, but reckoning through optimism, reckoning through lightheartedness, reckoning through a new beginning, a new narrative, a new story. It feels like this is a very potent new moon to set intentions, to create goals, to really think about what do you want to have accomplished six months from now when we have that full moon in Gemini? at the end of the year. What are, uh, it's a, we're in the middle point of the year, so it's like, what has changed since January? How far have you come? How, uh, what, how do you feel about your, the progress you've made and where would you like to keep going? And what kind of pivots would you like to make? And in light of the wound that was recently made aware to us, in light of the new shadow, not the new shadow, in light of the shadow aspect that we are now aware of, that we can now see and understand, how does that shift and change the way in which we are telling the story of our lives to ourselves and to others and how we are engaging with our lives? This is a powerful new moon for a shift in narrative and for, a, like, it, I'm feeling it as, like, a very empowering new moon where it's like we get to take the reins and regain control of our lives through this new story that we want to tell about ourselves to ourselves and to the world. So it just really feels like a beautiful, beautiful new moon. Um, and then a few days later, on June 11th, we have Mars activating Pluto once again. So Pluto was just activated a few days before the new moon by Jupiter in a trine. Now it will be activated by Mars in a square. So this is a little bit more difficult, a little bit harder, okay? And if you're with me on TikTok, I'm about to get cut off, but I have the full version of this conversation is up on YouTube where I'll be pulling some cards and speaking just a few more minutes about the astrology. So if you're interested in continuing the conversation and hearing more, um, I would love to see you over there. The link is in my bio. So for those of you who are with me here on YouTube, thank you. Um, so 
this Mars square Pluto aspect is going to be a little bit more challenging, right? It's not going to feel quite as easy or harmonious as the aspect on June 2nd that we just had yesterday was. However, it is going to be, uh, I'm sensing it as like a push, like a strong push, okay? So what, what, how, how this will feel to you will basically depend on how much, how, how, how willing you are to look at that shadow stuff that has been coming up. Have you been paying attention to your inner psyche and to your inner landscape? Are you listening to the intuitive uh, messages that are coming to you? Are you making an effort to engage with your own inner process and the shadow aspects that have been triggered and coming up? Or have you been repressing? Have you been ignoring? Have you been not engaging? Because if you haven't been engaging, then this aspect will feel extremely uncomfortable. This will be a huge push that will make you fall into all the inner psyche stuff that you've been avoiding, repressing, and not engaging with. Okay, this is going to feel extremely uncomfortable for those who are, have not been doing their inner work and actively seeking to examine their shadow, to examine their wounds, to engage with their trauma, to um, heal and evolve and grow and transmute, right? But for those of us who have been working actively with this energy, who've been making an effort to really look at themselves in the mirror and look at and not only themselves we can apply this to the world and the global stage as well if you've been engaged and paying attention to what's happening this aspect will be a push that pushes you to the next level of on your journey that will it'll be like a breakthrough energy that will push you on to like the next level like it'll, it's like a i'm picturing it as like I don't know, like those video games from the 90s where it's like you had lots of levels that you had to like jump one on top of the other. I'm picturing it as something that's like where you get to jump to the next level above. And, and, and how this will feel, I, like I said, will really depend on how well we've been um, doing our inner work and, and engaging with our inner essence. Okay. And then the next aspect would be on June 17th, Venus enters Cancer. This is going to be a, a, a preparation that's leading up to the full moon in Capricorn, which is going to be on June 21st in those very first degrees of Capricorn. And, um, and it's going to be uh, a very powerful full moon. I'm not gonna get into the full moon right now. I'm gonna make another video on that closer to the day when that actually comes, but um, it's gonna be a, a powerful, powerful first half of June for us. So now at this time, I wanna pull some cards and see what Source has to say about all of this. So, creator of all that ever was or will be across all space and time, please bring us some messages. What do we need to hear about this new moon in Gemini and this first part of the moon cycle? What do we need to know? What do we need to hear about it? What do we need to know? What do we need to hear about it, please? What do we need to know and what do we need to hear about it? What do we need to know? Thank you. Femme Fatale and the Fool. Light Attributes. Highlights the erotic energy of the feminine. Opens your heart when your dependency is rejected. Shadow Attributes. Inappropriate use of sensuality. Attachment to money and power. 
the fool, light attributes, fearlessly revealing emotion, helping people laugh at the absurdity of hypocrisy, shadow attributes, using humor to wound rather than to liberate, denial of your emotional truth. Yeah, this fool, it's coming through as that lighthearted energy I was talking about, that capacity to make light and bring a buoyancy to this deep inner work we're doing. And the femme fatale, this is divine feminine energy coming through very strongly, right? And this is something that is being activated in the collective in general. Um, we're in the process of the Divine Feminine reawakening and returning to her um, proper place, which is not below the masculine, but beside in equal uh, standing, measure, stature, and importance and relevance. And whether you're a man or a woman, this femme fatale energy is very important for us to connect to. Highlights the erotic energy of the feminine. Opens your heart when dependency is rejected. Listen to that. Opens your heart when dependency is rejected. So when we reject dependency on other people, places, or things, when we reject those codependent dynamics, those um, uh, like addictive dynamics that keep us in independent loops, whether this is with a substance, whether this is with a behavior or a thought pattern, or whether this is with another person, when we reject that dependency and, and, and settle into our sensuality, which is really what just living through the five senses, sight, smell, taste, touch, when we are rooted and connected to our physical body, to the here and now and living sensually, and we're not dependent on these other ex external relationships to provide something for us, our heart opens. We, get, we come into the heart space, right? That's really what it is about. This time that we're in right now is connecting to the heart space, to the seat of our soul. This is where our spiritual strength is. It's not up, up here and here. It's here, right? Our spiritual strength is in our heart. And that comes through being very connected to our body, being connected to our environment, being very rooted in the here and now, through the senses, through sensuality. Because when I think about sensuality, I don't just think about like sex. I think about what, being very present, like if you're eating a meal, like 100% feeling the textures and the tastes and smelling everything and eating slowly so you can enjoy that process. If you're listening to music, if you're dancing, to really be in that moment and in that flow with that sound and with that vibration. If you are um, with family, friends, loved ones, to be very present and connected to the people that you're with. That's what living centrally is about. And these two together are really speaking to me about this process of presence and lightheartedness that can come to us this new moon. I love that. It's so beautiful. Let's see what's at the bottom of the deck. Ooh, the wounded child. There is that shadow. Light attributes. Awakens compassion and desire to serve other wounded children. Opens the learning path of forgiveness. Shadow attributes. Blames all dysfunctional relationships on childhood wounds. Resists moving on through forgiveness. Yeah. The bottom of the deck energy to me is always kind of like the underlying background energy. Um, so the fact that it's the wounded child is really speaking to me about that shadow work that I was talking about before, right? The, all of this wounded child energy, all of our childhood wounds, all of our past life and ancestral stuff is coming up. And the ways that we can deal with it are with this femme fatale, this divine feminine and fool energy, where the fool is also really good at being lighthearted, right? So not being so enmeshed in our pain that we can't make a joke out of it or we can't laugh about it or we can't see it from another perspective where it doesn't feel like it's this huge thing that's enveloping us and destroying us. It's something that we can see from a different perspective and make light of it. And that's what this new moon in Gemini is helping us do. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. Love those messages. What else do we need to hear right now about this new moon? What else do we need to hear about this new moon, please? 
What else do we need to hear about this new moon in Gemini and the first half of June? What do we need to hear? What do we need to know about this time? Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, so I've got the dragonfly spirit of change. Ooh, and storm spirit chaos. Okay, so let's see the bottom of the deck. Spirit guardian of winter retreat. So it's a good thing that we have the full energy that's available to us and that we have the, the divine feminine because there is change and chaos that's on the horizon, right? Mm, this is something that I've been feeling intuitively that 2024 is a year of in incredible change. 2024, 2025, and 2026, we're in this portal when it comes to the astrology that there are major changes happening that ha that's related to the outer planets, Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune, all changing signs, um, one year after the other progressively. So this is something that is showing us big collective change because the outer planets take a long time to change signs. And the fact that they're all happening like this close together is speaking of major changes. So with storm and change, there's going to be some instability. There's going to be some unexpected happenings that are going to require our presence and attention. And there could be moments where you need to retreat. Here in the Southern Hemisphere where I am, the solstice that's coming up on the 21st is the winter solstice. This is the depths of winter here in the Southern Hemisphere. I know in the Northern Hemisphere, which may be where some of you guys are tuning in from, it's the summer solstice. But the, this card really talks to me about going into your protected space, right? Into your home where there is this bubble of protection where you are naturally, um, it's a natural safeguard. So wherever this is for you that you feel safe, whether this is your home, your room, maybe it might be a certain like park that you go on a walk at, or it might be um, some other place in nature that you like to go to that's a place of refuge. Make sure you're going to those places a lot to anchor in your energy to prepare for this change in chaos. So I'm, I'm getting with this change, it's like go with the flow. It's not going to be change that's going to be so um, disruptive. It's going to be change that is more flowing, that's going to feel natural. That if you allow yourself to be led by the natural flow of the universe, it will take you there. If you allow yourself to... Um, yeah, to go with that natural flow, it's going to take you there. Okay, so I'm noticing something on this card that I've never really noticed before. I don't know if it'll pick up on camera. But there's like the faintest outline of a man with his hand here that's over this dark cloud. So... Something about intentional confusion or intentional chaos. This could be a time where the powers that be, shall we say, um, may be creating intentional confusion, 
intentional blackouts, intentional information blackouts, intentional awareness blackouts, intentional perception blackouts. The way I'm perceiving this dark cloud, it's like, um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen in Harry Potter or read the Harry Potter books, but he uses this like dust that like creates this black cloud so and makes these loud noises as like a distraction so no one can see anything and you can make like a quick getaway or something. There's something like that with this dark cloud, with the chaos. So this could be like something happening in the media and like mainstream media that's like a blackout of information. This could be something where there's like a blackout, this blackout effect. Um, this may even be like actual blackouts, like electricity for some, in some places. Yeah, this, whenever this blackout energy comes up where it's like things feel confusing, where you're not getting the, the clear information or clear knowledge, or if you're actually having literal electricity blackouts, this is when you need to retreat. This is when you need to go into your home. This is when you need to like go to your safe place. I want to say to even create like a, um, a plan with like your loved ones that in case something happens, like where you guys are going to meet up. Something like that. That's very interesting that's coming through. Can I get more information about this blackout, please? Can I get more information? Who or what is causing this blackout? Or more information about this blackout? More information about this blackout, please. Can I get more information about this blackout? More information about this blackout, please. Poet expresses soul insights in symbolic language. Shadow attribute turns a lyric gift into negative or destructive effects. And healer. Passion to serve others by repairing the body, mind, and spirit. Ability to transform pain into healing. Shadow attribute, taking advantage of those who need help, failing to care for oneself. Okay, so interesting. In this card, he's applying with his hands. It looks like Reiki or something with his hands energy and in this card there is the hand over the over the cloud too Who or what is causing this blackout? More information, please. Who or what is causing this blackout? More information, please. What do I need to know about this blackout, please? What do we need to know about this blackout? Knight of Wands. So whatever this blackout energy is that, that they're bringing to my attention, it's something that's intentionally being created. It doesn't feel like it's necessarily malefic in the same way that I was describing that Harry Potter uses it to, um, you know, to, to, to get to do like a fast getaway kind of thing. 
it's 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 a um, intentional blackout that's meant to create a, a um, like a protection or a distraction or a lack of clarity that will allow for maybe like a getaway or what I'm getting is like another dimension to come through. Okay, so this is, okay, this might be out there for some of you guys, but I'm the, this is what's coming through. We're at a time right now where there's the bifurcation of timelines, where those who are wanting to go into a new way of being, a new dimension, a new earth, some people call it new earth, some people call it 5D, um, in anthroposophy, it was just called the bifurcation of the of the earth, and this is a process that uh, is talked about in many different cultures and religions, where there is this end times where things change, and the old world and the old ways get left behind and essentially don't evolve and don't continue. And the new world, the new dimension moves forward and goes into the next evolutionary stage. So what it feels like, it's like the healers and the poets, the healers and the poets and the dreamers, those who are aligned with the new earth, those who believe in a new way of being, those who, whose, whose minds and hearts and frequencies are open and aligned enough to universal consciousness to source to their heart and to the heavens, they are creating this blackout through the collective energy of a desire for change, a desire for a new way of being, a desire for a new earth in which there is more healing, more poetry, more love. Uh, I'm asking, you know, who or what is causing the blackout? Uh, we got two knights, the knight of pentacles at the bottom of the deck and the knight of, of wands, and the healer and the poet. It's like, that's why the Harry Potter came in, image came to me of the blackout. It's like, it's the good guys that are creating the blackout. It's not a bad thing. The blackout might feel like a bad thing. It might create some chaos. It might create some change. But what's actually happening is it's creating the, the distraction or the space needed for this new earth to unfold. Whoa, this feels like a really big message that's coming through. Um, uh, I... I really feel that I might need to do a whole reading just on this blackout message that's coming through and just focus on that. If you're interested in that, if you would like to see that, please drop a comment down below. Okay. Yeah, this is a blackout so that the doves can fly, so that there can be freedom, so there can be hope, there can be new life. Okay, what will assist us in preparing for this blackout and for this period of time? What will assist us in this process? This is going to be the final message for this reading. And then we're going to be wrapping up. What will assist us in this process in preparation for this blackout? What will assist us in this process? assist us in this process, please? What will assist us in this process? Move your body. Dance, breathe, flow. Again, flow coming through. And psychic strength, shield, talisman, gold, and light. Okay. So two things that will help us. 
first of all, relying on your innate spiritual strength and gifts, um, making sure you're connecting to your, your inner being, to your higher self, to the creator, to your spirit guides, your angels, your ancestors, rooting into your spiritual strength and practices right now very strongly, and also moving your body. The word flow coming through again, remi I'm reminding you that the changes that are going to come through, they will be flowing changes. There may be this blackout energy that comes, but it may be experienced differently by all of us. It may only affect some parts of the planet. It may be only affecting certain people depending on their level of consciousness. I'm really not sure how this blackout is going to play out. What, if it's literal, if it's metaphorical um, that they're talking about, but whatever it is, it's something that moving our physical body and flowing, dancing, um, stretching, exercising, all of these things are very helpful. And actually exercise is one of the most important tools for maintaining our spiritual strength and for maintaining a strong connection to source and the creator while still being anchored into our bodies. Because we are human beings, we are here for a reason, we have a physical vessel for a reason. And no matter how spiritually connected we are, if we lose connection to the body, then, um, then we get kind of floated away and carried away into psychosis and into unreal spiritual realms that are not um, true and that are not actually aligned with the natural organic um, way of the universe. Wow, okay. So that was a big message that just came through for all of us. So I hope that this was helpful for you. I hope that it gave you some guidance. I'm going to be making a, another reading that's specifically looking at this blackout energy. If you're interested in that, keep a look, keep an eye out for it. I'll be posting it soon. And I'm sending you lots of love. Bye.